Hey guys, today I'll be making a little bit different video uh, than my typical stuff here. We're kind of back on the clocks uh, made by Hammond uh, Clock Company, which later became Hammond Organ Company, which I've got a whole video on uh, the kind of the history and, and that kind of stuff, and also how the actual synchronous clocks work uh, that I'll put in the description of this video. But in my research of the synchronous clock, I found out there's another model of the Hammond clock called the Bicronius clock which you can see by the nameplate here on the back cover as well as on the plate the clock face. You can see it says Bicronius where the others just say synchronous. You can see there. So that's a, a way of identifying them. But uh, what the difference is between the two is the synchronous clocks when you lose power they actually quit. The Bicronius clock was actually a clock that if it lost power it would run 30 minutes after power loss so it give you some time to keep up with your clock and uh, it would actually still run up, up till 30 minutes after 30 minutes you'd have to of course you know restart it but uh, so I got my interest up when I was working on these to kind of look into these and just kind of see how they work because I was really curious myself so I ended up buying two of them because they both were in bad shape. There's a design flaw with these clocks in particular. And that is that they use uh, uh, Bakelite gears and they just strip. And so I attempted to fix this one and, and I found that I can actually put some JB Weld on the gears that are missing and cut new teeth. Kind of works. It's not great. I don't really have the, the skill set to make new teeth on the gears. But um, that's the design flaw with this particular model of clock because these gears like to strip out because there is a lot of tension in them and I'll explain all this here in a minute. So what we've got that makes up this clock is you can already see it's more complicated as far as the gear sets than what you have on the basic ones. So this is just your basic synchronous clock. You can see your motor in there running. I got a flashlight so you can kind of see the, the way this works. Let me zoom in here if I can. So right down there is the motor. You can see that the motor is turning that Bakelite gear there, which is then turning all the other gears. So that's kind of how your your basic synchronous clock works. Now this is exposed motor where the other video I made actually had an encapsulated motor that I had to take apart and clean and flush and get all the old oil out of and refill. Uh, these are a little bit simpler. These are older and they're, these are the alarm clocks which use a little different setup. So that brings us to the Bicronius clock. You can see that you got these extra gear sets in the front. And what you have that makes up this clock is the actual synchronous motor, which is a lot bigger. It's a big old motor, which you can see based off this one I got opened up. And it actually does two jobs, um, which I'll explain here in a minute. So what we have is we have the motor that's a lot beefier, so it can actually have more torque and a little bit more horsepower. And then what that does in the front we got a spring, we got a drum spring here, and a clutch that grabs this one. So as this thing runs, it actually stores energy in this in this drum spring here. And then when you lose power, it's supposed to uh, it put that energy across this other gear set here, which then would run a reg. A, that's actually a governor there. It govern governs the speed. And then uh, that's how it actually works. And this thing will hold charge up to 30 minutes. So it actually keep enough tension to run for 30 minutes after power loss. That's how it works. Bringing back to the motor though, what's really genius about this motor design is it's actually two parts of this motor. So you've got this, this gear back here with all the teeth on it, which you would think would be the actual uh, part of the motor. That's actually a, from what I've discovered, a electromagnetic brake is what that is. And then this front piece, you can see this, this brown colored front piece here. My light's horrible in here. I apologize for that, guys. Um, but that's actually the the actual uh, motor right there that turns. The stator, I guess you could call it. Um, but basically, this is on a, on a shelf. These, these are two separate parts. I can turn that one separate from the from the actual brake. And what that does is that brake actually helps keep this gear here from turning until it, it breaks the strength of that electromagnetic field on that brake. It allows it to turn so it doesn't overwind. It's kind of how that worked. Really cool. 
really cool uh, concept. Now the problem is I hadn't had one of these clocks yet to be completely working correctly, but I can power this thing up and let you kind of see how this works. So you'll see the two gear sets. And I do apologize for the noise, I work in next door here. Um, let me plug this clock in. First thing you'll notice is it'll actually start on its own. So we're running there. You see the gear set, you can see that back gear is not turning. Of course this thing's not well, like I say, I hadn't finished working on it yet. But basically this one here would turn, it's winding up that spring right there. And then if this thing stops, what happens is, and you can actually see that electric brake back down there. Let me see if I can show you that. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see in there. Of course, my flashlight is not very good either. But anyways, it's actually uh, got a brake in there. So even when I turn this, if I turn this by hand, that's not turning in there. Of course, you can't see it because the lighting's horrible. But anyways. Uh, it's breaking this until it loses power and then what would happen if it was working right is it actually turned the other gear set. Of course you can see that little clutch is not working on this. On this, that's the problem with it. That's why it's actually not, that's why it's stopping. But we can actually turn, let me get this guy fixed, there we go. So you can see that I can turn this by hand as if the drum had power in it. And you can see it's actually turning there. That's the governor. That would set the speed of it. And of course that front gear that was originally the the motor, connected motor uh, gear is not running anymore. See, so I'm just putting pressure on that uh, drum spring. And of course there's a governor there that and it's actually got a little catch here that actually pops in to uh, slow this thing down if it over, if it over revs. But that's how it works. So basically, like I say, the single run and then when it hits the, the maximum uh, tension, it'll actually break that electromagnetic field uh, on that brake, letting both gears turn so it doesn't just keep overwinding that spring. But like I say, the weakness is in these gears right here because there's a lot of tension on these two gears and Bakelite, you know, it's just not a real good material right there. But anyways, I just want to make a video kind of showing how that works. Uh, just kind of give you an overview. So I thought some of you might find this very interesting, as I did, um, just do the research. And, but you can kind of see here, I put this, this motor back together here. The other problem is, too, I'm finding with this particular model clock is that everything is Bakelite. So you're, they put these Bakelite plates in here to work as the bearings and the bushings for the shafts of the gears, and it just wears out. And so there's a lot of wear in, in, in this particular model clock. But you can kind of see there how that brake sets back there. That's a better example there. It actually has that little tab coming off the, the motor or the field coil. And that's what actually locks it. And uh, so that's kind of how that works. And of course this one here would turn in front right there. That's actually would be your motor right there. And then it has a shaft that comes out. Of course this one's broke. This is one of the ones that didn't survive. And it would actually hook to the the governor plate is how that works. But uh, anyway, I just thought some of you guys might find this interesting. Some of you clock people out there as well as anybody that might be interested in Hammond organ history. Uh, this is part of the Hammond organ history as well. But uh, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. And there will be more stuff to come here very soon. Take care. Okay, so I managed to get this thing to run real quick with the two gears as if it was fully charged. And you can see how this works. And now both gear sets are running because it's overcame that electromagnetic field of that brake. And you can see the governor is turning back here. And that's how that would work in the case of it actually fully charged and it still got power. It would just keep running. And that's how that would work. But uh, I'm glad I was able to capture this for you guys. This is actually how it would run fully charged.